This time a quick speed shot, check it out, bam! I dragged home a Ford Flathead six-cylinder engine out of a 1940 Ford pickup. I'm also moving some other V8 Ford Flatheads out of the shop, down to the pole barn, and doing some other monkeying around. All right now, at the quick speed shop. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. Bam, so I got this thing unloaded. Let's go back. I'll show you some other things I got before I got to this stage. I'm back messing around in the pole barn. I've got some cars put away, or trucks put away, I should say. Got the 29 AA tow truck here. Got the Model A 31 Coupe, and then the 46 Studebaker truck. What I'm working on is put some shelves in here. I bought these at an auction. Uh, Albert Pele, the world famous uh, big metal sculptor, sculptor. He made like the, uh, the gates for the Smithsonian, the I think the Kansas City Zoo, Gates, much other stuff. Anyways, he was based in Rochester, New York, and I went to his auction when he retired. Bought a bunch of stuff, including some shelves and some tables and all that. So, got these super heavy duty Elder Pele shelves I'm gonna put up here in a pool barn. I don't know how to lay these down, but it's going to take some kind of ingenuity to stand them back up. Just that easy. For people new to the channel that haven't seen this before, this is what the truck I did my first set of videos on like two years ago, two and a half years ago. It's a 1929 Ford Double A, uh, which means ton and a half truck. It's been shortened. When I got it, it was like a doodle bug, which means a homemade tractor. It didn't have any fenders. It had a huge chunk of concrete on the back. It had uh, chains on it. It had a homemade snow plow hung off the front with like headlights way up here and it was painted like red and orange and all kinds of goofy colors. And it sat in a shed for probably, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Raccoons would like rip the whole inside of it out. It was full of garbage and it was literally like walled off in the shed and this guy uh, uh, died and they were selling the house and cleaning it out. And I went in there and I bought it from uh, some guys who helped them clean out. And I built this. It's just like a rattle can resto. I uh, brush painted the chassis defenders. I uh, brush painted the whole thing with it's, this is the original color scheme of this truck, was green with a black fenders and black grill shell, like all the commercial trucks. It's got the, uh, uh, it's a 29 with the four speed transmission, but somebody is, when they played around with it, they put a dually front end in it, and it's got like 30 uh, drums and 30 front wheels on it. And it's got a single axle rear end in it, so there's some mix and match of parts going on, but it's a 29 double A. Uh, the body is all original.
I left the remnants of the orange firewall here. The whole thing was painted orange. It was red on the outside, but you can see the original green here. Um, I just kind of painted a Ford engine green because I didn't have the right color green, but it's close. Um, I took the engine out of it. I got it running, or I didn't take the engine out. I took the head off and all that, got it freed up. I threw a, a heater on, manifold on here, a heater, which takes air, blows through here, the manifold heats it, and then it blows it into the cab here. I just threw that on. Um, the engine runs good, it starts right up. I've done a bunch of videos of this truck, cold starting it in six degree weather, it starts up like that and uh, fires right up. It leaks a little bit of oil, like all the Model A's do, but it run, runs super mint. I've taken it to a bunch of tractor shows and it, it'll run along all day long with uh, no problem, doesn't get hot, fires right up, so it's super awesome. On the back here is a homemade winch set that I built. This uh, mimics a Weaver auto crane. You can look up those. They're made in the 1920s and 30s, but it's a manual driven winch. I've got this uh, crank handle here that goes on the, uh, on the drive. You can drive it. Yeah, you can drive it either side manually. Usually I drive it from the driver's side. So I built this kind of a copy of a Weaver auto crane. I've just got a single drive, so it doesn't have a lot of torque to pick stuff up but it will pick it up. The framework I made similar to the Weaver Auto Crane. I've used square hardware, so it like mimics the look of it. Um, the boom, my friend helped me heat and bend this out of this heavy duty angle iron. I've also made a, a uh, draw bar here that has a cradle that picks up early Ford uh, axles under the, the I-beam axles under the F early Ford cars. So I've towed a bunch of them around the yard like that. So this comes down, you hook the uh, the winch cable onto that and you pick the draw bar up so that you don't get the swinging motion when you're just up on the cable. But it's super awesome, it works great. You can go back in the channel or look up uh, Model A tow truck on the channel and I got some cool videos of towing stuff around the yard with it. But it's a super cool truck. I drive it around probably three or four times a year. It always fires right up and, and goes good. I need to work on the brakes because it doesn't want to stop but it, it only goes a few miles an hour. But it's super cool. This old Ford technology is awesome, and uh, the thing's going to be 91, 92 years old here, coming up here soon, and it's, it's amazing that it's still, uh, still out kicking. It can still do work and still haul stuff around. Regular quick speed shop, but it's a complete disaster in here. Um, i got to go through all this wiring on the floor. My friend gave me a bunch of old harnesses from cars, and I cut some connectors off it and then scrapped the wire out. But over here... <laughs> I've got a thing I'm going on, uh, Derek from Vice Grip Garage. If you guys watch Vice Grip, he's got a uh, 67 F250 he's doing for his son, and he's looking for two-wheel drive F250 hubcaps. His truck's a six-cylinder, so it's the base model. And uh, these are the correct hubcaps for that truck. These are extremely hard to find. Um, it took me, uh, I got like... But different flavors. These came off a of motorhome I got out of a junkyard, a 60s motorhome that I've been collecting. So my, I run the stainless steel version of these on my F250, but I started out with some painted ones because that's all I could find. And uh, nobody ever saved three quarter ton truck hubcaps. So I'm going to send them a set of five. I've got these, these four that match here. Then I got one that's a little bit taller and it's got some tar on it with a little damage. But So I'm going to send them these on uh, Monday. He's going to send me a hat or a shirt and hopefully uh, get a shout out in his video. You'll see these on his white 67 F250. I'm going to hang on to my... It's good for it. These are mint shaped. They're just a uh, little crunchy. What's, it? oh, what's this? Maine Canada. FOMO Coke. No kidding. Okay, so next day I got all that wire uh, sorted through and got all the connectors cut off. I'm just starting to clean out here now. I got my... Uh, 258 AMC Jeep 6 here. This came out of the 86 AMC uh, Eagle Wagon I cut up like last winter. This is going down in the pole barn to be stored by those shelves. And then uh, what we got over here, check this out. Wait till you see this. Oh. Wait till I dump this outside. These are my K.R. Wilson Ford Flathead powered uh, power plants here. This one is, as nice, is the nicest one, or well, 
This one, so it's got a drive on the back here with an in and out hand clutch that would run a pulley. And the other one is a generator, the one behind it, which you can't probably see right now. But I, these guys are extremely heavy. They're on uh, skates and they will roll around. They're filthy. I want to get them kind of brushed off or blown off, maybe hose them down a little bit. But there's two of them. There's this one and there's a huge generator behind me that is uh, super, super heavy. They're both uh, T truck motors. They got the T on the flathead. They're 24 stud. I think they're 30, 30 39 um, engines is what they are. Now both these run, I bought them from a guy that was downsizing. This one ran, well, two years ago now. It's got a 35 Ford truck radiator on it. That's how they came from K.R. Wilson. And uh, I want to get this one running first, uh, probably in the spring. And then the other one needs some, the water pumps rebuilt, the generator. But I want to, I would like to get the generator functional because I could power my house in about half the neighborhood with it. For now, I'm just going to put these out of the pole barn and store them in a little bit cleaner environment. So I got to drag them on up out of here. I got a uh, manufactured fuel tank for the third one over here. The third one, the third one over here is kind of buried. Um, this is an outdoor unit that had uh, the full sheet metal enclosure on it. The problem with this one is the uh, the governor broke and it took out the radiator. But I'm going to clean this engine up, put new head gaskets and stuff on it, clean it all up, new water pumps, and this is the engine that's going to go in my 37 Ford. So it's an 85 horse motor, so that'll, that'll work out good out in there. So I'm going to save the shell for parts, and we're going to get it running on the stand probably later in the winter, and uh, then I'll take it out and put it in 37 Ford. But in the meantime, i got to get these suckers pulled out and try to get them up on the trailer. Oh, flathead parts. These are tranny, uh, tranny brackets. So these are on casters, and even though it's extremely heavy, the casters are really good. So, oh yeah, look at, whoa. look at that! It rolls like gangbusters. Whoa! This thing rolls itself. Ah. Whoa! Nice, man. That thing is filthy. So I'm going to get these rolled out towards the door more and blow them off. We'll take a closer look at them. You know, you can see the generator up close a little bit more. This thing is huge and heavy. It's a 120, uh, 240 generator. There's a control box that goes up on here. i got to figure out what the winding, which windings do what to power this thing, and I'd like to get it functional. If I have the control box that goes up here, I took it off to try to see what's going on. But as you can see here, oh, by the way, this is on a cast iron base that's like one inch thick. This whole thing. So you got the huge weight of the generator and then the cast iron base. I mean, I bet the same weight is close to a thousand pounds. It's way beefy. But you got the complete flathead here. There's gauges. It's got this one's got a curved face Stuart Warner gauge on the other side. You got a big oil filter. You got your uh, 90, 97 carb. This one might be earlier. This is a 94. This one's got a 94 on it. Somebody replaced the carburetor on the other one with a 97. This has got the 94 on it. You see, because this was meant to run inside the basement of a building, it sucks the the fumes from the engine down, or I'm sorry, it takes the fumes from the crankcase and sucks them into the air cleaner, because this would have been like in a basement of an industrial building to run it. That, so it's all self-contained, and the exhaust would have gone up through the roof. A lot of obstacles in here, a lot of obstacles. Whoa. You hot rod guys will recognize this. Check it out. It's a curved glass winged Stuart Warner oil pressure gauge. It's, uh, it's a holy grail of gauges for hot rods. and Somebody added it to this on this homemade bracket, but that's, that's super cool. That's got that on there. I'll be uh, real careful of that. That's a really neat piece. You got hand controls here. You got a troke rod, which is like 37, 38 Ford knobs. Then you can hold the throttle open or closed. But it also has a governor, which is oil fed, and the governor runs the thing. I think about 1800 RPM it keeps it at. You can see here, 
these would have been the gauges that were in a thing originally, uh, US gauges, amp gauge and uh, oil pressure gauge. It's got electric start, the same choke and uh, throttle level, level levers, um, 36, 37, 38 Ford. Ford starter button here and it's got this Guardian uh, contact to the ignition that if the oil pressure drops below a certain point it or if it gets hot it'll trip out a set of electrical contacts in here and shut the ignition off so you don't blow up your unit but this thing uh, free wheels here you got a clutch you got this would run your implement somebody has sawed this off it would have been longer out here but you go like this then when you throw it in you got a hand clutch which engages the thing to the engine so this unit would have meant to be inside as well, in a basement or into a factory. I put the 34 Ford truck commercial grill shell just over the radiator to protect from stuff hitting it. But this would have stood alone, uh, no enclosure, just as you see it. But this is all cast iron. These pieces are cast in Buffalo, New York with the K.R. Wilson logo. K.R. Wilson made a lot of the Ford tools that the Ford factory used. They made the engine stands for flatheads and Model A and B engines and a lot of other Ford specific tools. So they would have bought the power plants from Ford and then they mach they made their own cast iron bracketry to mount this up and this uh, trolley system here which would have bolt been bolted to the ground. Um, they manufactured all this stuff but the Ford parts are, um, you know, they would have sourced from Ford. Now this is a little bit newer oil filter than it should be on here. Somebody's modified this with a V8 on here. I'm, this is probably late 40s early 50s with this logo but that's cool it should have had that bigger pot oil filter like on the generator inside but it's got the governor here oil fed oil line to drain back down it's got the these have the truck no they don't before a truck pan these all have an oiling system that drains back down so you got oiling going to everything plus that drop out ignition system these are set to run and run for hours unattended at a time and uh, you know power up early industrial America well, once again, I've waited too long. I've lost the light, but I've got my trailer set up. I got a real heavy duty aluminum dock plate ramp. I think it's going to work out good. I'm going to try to wrestle these guys up onto the trailer one at a time, strap them down, and then drive them around back and unload them in the pole barn. So hopefully, this goes all right. I'm going to hook it up and I'll try it out. I got my wires tied down here, sorta. I got the generators on there and the 258. I almost lost it getting it up the ramp, but I got it on there now. Got it squatted down on the Rusty Junk YJ. Where am I? I got it hooked up the Rusty Junk YJ. And I'm back around to the pole barn and uh, hopefully be able to get this stuff inside without any more catastrophe. <laughs>
that generator is so heavy I can't push it back in the trailer so I'm hooking up the snatch block to the back of the tow truck over here. Bam! And I'm gonna use some snatch block reverse traction action to pull it up out of here. house my garage door trim I uh, pretty much got it here so I now I gotta spin it around try to get in the lift of the door there's a little lip right here on my angle iron this thing is so freaking heavy and I got a bad wrist it's killing me here oh my god this Harbor Freight jack is about one step above useless these stupid wheels things freaking junk junk. Now, let's see if I can shove it. Man. It's good for it. thing is Wasn't uh, very easy at all, I'll tell you what. <sighs> that gray sucker is very, very heavy. That's got to be at least a thousand pounds. Easily. And those small wheels didn't help. The red one's got the big wheels, which made it roll a lot easier. But, bam, there we go. Got these in here for the winter. Now I can concentrate and clean up the upper garage because that's. Disaster. I got room to park the Mercury in here for a while. The last part of today's festivities are unloading the 1940 Ford flathead six-cylinder engine and transmission my friend Dylan uh, bought with a bunch of stuff that came out of a 40 Ford pickup. And the motor turns over, it's all complete. Maybe I'll use it in something or just get it running on a stand or use it for a display motor. But it was cheap and complete and it turns over so I went up to this place and got it. Just so I need more rusty junk.
slowly coming down. There we go. This thing's down right on matches. Alright, there we go. I finally got it. So it's not going to tip over. I'm going to put this away for now up here in the upper garage, but later on I'll be storing it down in the pole barn. And uh, this thing's kind of cool. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'll stash it for now. Don't trash it when you can stash it. And hopefully it'll come in handy at some future point in the future. So that's it for now. I'm glad I got everything put away. That was a lot, a lot of work and it got dark, but I got it all done. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. And we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop. Messing around with all kinds of old flathead Ford action.